In this how to is felt, we're going to deal with scroll effects. And so let's head on over to W3 Schools. And they have a number of things here on their site that will deal with effects that you can do when you scroll the web page. This one in particular is slide the nav bar down on scroll. And this is what that looks like. This one is hiding the nav bar on scroll. And this one is shrinking the nav bar. So we'll tackle all of these and in, including some others. But the idea is that uh, we will add effects in one way or another, not only to the nav, but also to other HTML elements as we're scrolling down the page. Let's go ahead and start with this first one, slide down bar on scroll. And what I'm going to do here is click the try it yourself. And I'll start copying over the HTML and the CSS. Okay, so you can't see the nav bar right now. And if we go take a look at the nav bar rule, it has a top property of negative 50. So if I bring that to zero, you can now see it. If I bring it back to negative 50, it goes away. So we're going to try a couple different ways to do this. Um, we'll start with the top actually showing. And then what we'll do is we'll hide it using a svelte if block. And we'll say if y is uh, greater than or equal to 80. Now we haven't defined y yet, and we'll get to that. But the first thing we're going to do is within the markup, we're going to use a special svelte element called svelte window. And what we're going to do is we're going to bind a property that they've created called scroll y. And we're going to bind that to a variable we're going to create called y. So let's come up here into the script tags. We'll make that variable. And right below that variable, we'll make a reactive console log, which will console log y. So now that svelte window is bound to that, and we're console logging that value. As soon as I start scrolling, you can see the numbers um, will go into the console. So now that we have the Svelte window tracking scroll Y and we're storing scroll Y inside the variable Y, we can now do something with it. So if we come back down here to our HTML, which represents our nav bar, we've created a condition here. If Y is greater or equal to 80, then go ahead and show this HTML element. And that's what happens. As soon as we go back up to the top, it disappears. Let me clear again. And right there, let's see, look at the bottom. See, we're over 80. We're greater than 80. So that's why it's showing. Now, the other thing we can do inside Svelte is it comes included with transitions. So we can go ahead and import a transition, for example, slide. And then on this div, we'll use the transition directive and will indicate to use the slide transition. So now if we go back to the top again, and then go until, right when we get past 80, you can see the nav slides down. Now that may or may not be the effect that you want, but this is a very svelte way to hide and reveal elements is to use if blocks. Now another thing we can do is instead of slide, we could fly. And fly is almost like a fade unless we give it some direction. So let's do that. We can give it some parameters. And let's say come from the left side, fly in from the left side. Let's try that. See, so it flies in from the left side. And equally, we can replace transition with an indirective. So it'll come in from the left side. And it'll go out the right side. By making negative positive, we'll make it go out the right side. So it goes out that way, comes in from the left, goes out towards the right. So this is one way to do it. Now, another way to do this is we'll go ahead and remove all of these transitions, um, and we'll also remove this if block. 
and we'll kind of do it old school JavaScript where we add and remove a class. Now we'll still go ahead and use this Svelte window element, but what we'll do instead is we'll go back to the CSS and go back to the original rule it had, which was placing the top property at negative 50 pixels, so we can't see it. So now what we could do is we can add a property, or excuse me, we can add a rule, we'll call it show, and we'll make the top property be zero pixels. And so now with the show class, we can go ahead and add this class dynamically. And the way we use that with Svelte shorthand is we put the attribute class, colon, the class we want to add, and then the condition that has to be met to add this. And we can do what we did before, which was y is greater than or equal to 80. And so remember, the y is storing the scroll y value. So as we scroll down, when it gets greater than 80, then this class show will get added to this div. And show sets top to zero. So this should come down, but it doesn't. And this is just plain old CSS that's uh, preventing this from happening. Remember, classes can't overrule um, an ID unless, of course, we add specificity to it. So what we're going to need to do is put a div with the ID of navbar. So now that that's the case, the navbar will come in as expected. So that's two ways that we can hide and show the nav bar. The first one was using if blocks, and the second one was dynamically adding and removing classes. And here's the nav bar now. So if I go ahead and scroll, you can see that the class show is added. And if I scroll back up, it gets removed. So what I've done now is I've taken a number of effects from the W3 schools that we had talked about before, sliding down the navbar, hiding the navbar, shrinking the navbar, and I've gone ahead and put them all inside one Svelte app. I don't want to get too much into how this is set up, but the idea is that the majority of the body here is going to be at the bottom of this app component. And then what I did was I took the nav itself and broke it off into its own component. Um, and you can see here, like this first one called the stick, here's a header, and then the nav bar. And so I kept the, the body of the website inside the app component. Now feel free to, on W3Schools, if you go all the way to the bottom of the how-to section, they actually have some website content here. So you can come on over to make a website and just grab this code, you know, just to practice doing these little svelte exercises. So in this first exercise, we have this nav bar. And as we scroll up, it would be wonderful if we could get that nav bar to stick. And so on the svelte REPL within sticky nav, if I scroll, you can see it sticks. Now let's go through what it's doing here. And it's exactly what we just did when uh, we had the nav bar hide and show. The first thing is we make use of this svelte window element. So we bring that in and we make sure to bind it to a property that svelte has created called scroll y. So we bind colon scroll y and then we bind it to a variable that we're going to create inside the script tags. And this variable here will track, it will store the value of what scroll y is. So now we come down here to the nav itself. Here's the div for the nav. And we created a class called sticky. Let's go down and see that. And sticky makes a position fixed, top zero, and then width of 100%. So we add this class, and we only add this class when this condition is met when the y variable is greater than or equal to 90, 390. Now, the cool thing about Svelte is we can see what the value of y is right on the site here. And so that's what I did with one of these anchor tags is I took the y value, and as, as long as you put it inside of Svelte uh, curly brackets here, then you'll be able to see this dynamically move here. 
So if I go to the top, you can see it's at zero. If I keep scrolling, and right when the scroll Y is greater than or equal to 390, then the nav bar will stick. And as soon as it's less than 390, it comes back to the other state. And so all we're doing is adding a class, and then we're removing a class. Adding a class, removing a class. So with that in mind, let's go over to the next nav bar. And I'm going to hit the right arrow to do that. If you come to my Svelte REPL, um, all you have to do is hit the right or left arrow to move on to the next nav bar effect. So the next one is called Shrink. So if we go all the way to the top, we'll see that a class of Shrink will get added when the Y value is greater than 80. So here's the scroll value right here. As soon as it is greater than 80, then it shrinks down. And so let's see what this is, shrink. If we come down to the CSS, it was a class that we created where we're just taking the padding and adjusting it from the original nav bar. So that's shrink nav. Let's go to the next one called slide down nav. So when scroll Y is greater than or equal to 80, the nav bar slides down. You can see scroll Y being tracked there. And we went through this one already at the beginning where we're just adjusting the top property. Let's go to the next one, which is hide nav. And this, the nav will get hidden when scroll Y is greater than or equal to 100. So let's see that. As soon as it's 100, it goes away. Now let's move to the next nav bar called change colors. So this nav color will change when scroll Y is greater than or equal to 60. And again, that, that gets added through this, it's kind of class shorthand, and we're adding change background. And if we come down to change background, we can see that we're just changing the background color to something different than what the nav bar started out with. Now, the power in this is not so much Svelte-centered. It's really about your CSS skills and, and how creative you want to get with that. So in this case, we're just changing the background color, but you can you know, make an animation. Like I made an animation here uh, based on at keyframes called Vegas. And so if I bring that in, um, it's still the same class I'm adding, but I've just added another property. And if I now scroll up and when it gets greater than 60, then that animation gets added to the nav bar. And so this can just be as creative as you can make your classes. Now, another thing that I added on this particular web page here was connect it to us using if blocks to show certain HTML elements. So in this case, I've created an, an HTML element, which is a paragraph tag. And this paragraph tag will only show when Y, when scroll Y is greater than or equal to 200. Now, the other thing that I added too was also a class and a class of marquee gets added when this condition is met as well when y is greater than or equal to 200. So let's come down and look at the class marquee. So marquee is set here and it's using an animation which will transform the paragraph tag from the right side of the menu and over time move it across to the left side. And so I've added these other properties to marquee and marquee gets added when y is greater than or equal to 200. So let's pay attention to the scroll y here. And as soon as I'm a greater than or equal to 200, you can see that the marquee moves across the screen. And as soon as I'm less than 200, then the marquee goes away. So again, this is just these two patterns back and forth. We can control elements, how they look, and their presence on the DOM based on these conditions. 
And these conditions of adding a, a class or removing a class or showing an element or removing an element in this case is based on scrolling up and down the page. And again, this is our main lick here. You have to set up Svelte window. You bind it to scroll Y. Scroll Y is a property that Svelte has created for us. And then we can bind that to a variable that we create up here. And then this variable will store whatever scroll Y is. And so the last one I want to deal with is called dynamic. So for the dynamic web page, we'll transition elements using the bind directive, the scroll Y property, a variable, and if blocks. And if we sl slowly scroll down, we'll see that this div comes in and it's coming in because it's using a Svelte transition. And if you can see at the top here, I went ahead and imported some transitions. And this div right here is wrapped in an if block that if y is greater than or equal to 168, then this div will show up. But you can see even more than that, I've also added some transitions to elements in here. So let's go back to the top again. And if I come down, it comes in. But then this right here, this div here, which is has a class of fake image, this comes in also with its own transition of slide. And so you can add these transitions within different elements tucked inside other parents. So this parent will only get shown if if is greater than, if y is greater than or equal to 168. But in to on top of that, I can dynamically show these child elements um, through transitions as well. So now if I keep scrolling down the page, this one flies in. If I keep scrolling down, now this child element comes in. If I keep scrolling down, then this child element comes in. And then its children come in. And these children also, these images also have transitions on them. And in this case, they are blur transitions. So I'll go back to the top again. That comes in. This one flies in. Those images blur in. Those images blur in. And then if I keep scrolling, look at this. Now I was able to bring in a modal window that a person could now sign up for a newsletter. And this modal is also done the same way, but it's based on the condition of when Y is greater than or equal to 1,570 pixels. Go ahead and show this. Now, I also went ahead and set up some on-click uh, event listeners that will help me to hide the modo when I don't want it. But, you know, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to show that you can show different HTML elements based on the scroll Y. And as you go up and down, they'll remove and show themselves. So those are two main ways in Svelte that you can creatively make a, a website dynamic by hiding and showing elements, by adding and removing classes. And all of this is based on the scroll Y property.